for this on this computer. Post na lang din, bud. Yeah, post para make ko host. Okay. We are ready. Oops. Bakit uh, ikaw kinang speaker? <laughs> Ikaw na puntang speaker. Hindi pa lang salita si Bad Bird. Ah, kaya, kaya, kaya pala. Okay, so. <laughs> kaya pala. Yan. Okay, so magandang gabi sa lahat yan sa Pilipinas. At uh, tayo ay uh, magsimula sa ating pag-aaral sa aklat ng Korinto uh, at ang aklat ng Korinto actually ay uh, dito sa section nito ay uh, ito yung tinatawag natin concerning the uh, Christian liberty which is actually uh, chapter beginning chapter 8 to uh, chapter 8 to chapter 11 actually or chapter 10 or chapter 11 verse 1 so so the young uh, chapter 8 actually is uh, uh, eating meat offered to idols no? idols so, so dito sa sa Corinto ay uh, ang uh, lagi natin marinig sa traditional uh, interpretations of this uh, background ay sa panahon ni Apostol Pablo yung mga pagan gentiles offered uh, sacrifice anima animals to the uh, the temples at uh, a portions of the member of the uh, sacrifice na binibigay ng mga membro ng mga gentiles nito sa kanila mga gods at goddesses ay itong kanilang binibigay uh, ina inaain no uh, for sacrifice only a portions of that so karamihan dahil sa marami naman nagdadala ng kwan ng uh, hinain o karne ay ito ay hindi na maubos ng mga pare nila no? at mga asistan nila doon. So ang ginagawa nila, dahil marami ito, binibinta doon sa market. Meron silang tinatawag na uh, nagtitinda doon. No? Na, hindi naman talaga pare at uh, ako din may binibinta nila doon. At, uh, ito naman yung uh, butcher na ito, hindi naman sinasabi kung ito ay hain sa, ano, uh, sa idols. At uh, karamihan, Yung mga tao bumibili doon kasi this is the uh, alam mo yung pag ginaain sa ano sacrifice sa idol talagang the best uh, so maganda yung karne doon at karamihan sa mga Kristiyano din ay bumibili rin doon no dahil yung kanilang knowledge ay ay uh, there's nothing wrong with those uh, uh, food offered to idols because idol himself i mean god himself or the goddesses that they have are nothing However, Paul, this is the time when, when it is wrong to do right. When you practice your liberty, as ito yung summary natin, meat offered to idols. To the principles that loves overrules knowledge, Paul exhorts the Corinthians to limit their liberty with love for their weaker brothers. Because even though idols are nothing, a weaker brother me act against his conscience when he says a strong a stronger brother partaking of meat offered to idols no? so uh, ito yung uh, maging problema so uh, verses 8 1 to 3 actually is all know that we all have knowledge that is verses 1 to 3 now concerning the things sacrificed to idols we know that we all have knowledge knowledge makes arrogance but loves uh, edifies. If anyone suppose, supposes that he knows everything, he has not yet known that he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by him. And so the result, uh, the result of knowledge, knowledge make arrogance, but loves edifies. And the test of knowledge, if you love God, the they are known by God. So, dito makikita natin, no, uh, 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 Paul began to discuss uh, whether 
Apple he is not discussing whether we should eat or not eat certain food. But with our own attitude concerning the knowledge that we have. So may mga kapatid na alam nila na meron silang kaalaman, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, yung sabi ng mga Kristiyano doon, no? dahil uh, uh, the, God is, the God that we have is nothing actually. But the, the problem is, there are some brothers that will, will be uh, matitison. So sabi ng Apostol Pablo, ano po piliin mo? No? Knowledge or love? But knowledge make a person arrogance and loves uh, a defile. So uh, knowledge by itself is not enough. Even knowledge of the fact that God's word is not enough. There must also be love. If love is not present, then something else will grow in its place. And that is arrogance. So, makikita natin dito, no? all believers knew that there were no other gods besides the true one true God. This knowledge was leading some in the church to think that eating in an idol temple was insignificant. And so, in contrast to, to knowledge, and, to knowledge, love edifies, knowledge pop up, but love build up. So, knowledge without love is incomplete by itself, which will lead to a correct, not, which will not lead to correct. Uh, so Paul is actually is not telling them to abandon knowledge. You know? Knowledge is uh, in fundamentals for a person to have a right conduct. And so here, the test of knowledge, if they love God, they are known by God. So here is the test of the true knowledge. It is a test by our love for God. If we really know God and are, and are known by God, then we will love him. And if we truly love God, then we will also love those whom God loves. So we need to natin ng Panginoon, ipigin natin yung uh, ating uh, mga kapatid, no? Uh, so this, this is a principle that there is something that is more important than knowledge, and it is love. Loving is superior to knowing. So we need to, although we, uh, we have, uh, of course, real love cannot exist without certain level of knowledge, but knowing is tested by loving. So, uh, so instead of Paul ta talking about food, Paul first talks about the principle of knowledge and love. Christian behavior is founded in love and uh, not knowing. And the goals of Christian life is not only knowledge, but more about love. Okay, so uh, letter B, uh, that is actually uh, uh, the second part of uh, when it is wrong to do right, or meme, we will say that when you practice your liberty, we know that there is no such thing as an idol. So, therefore, concerning the eating of things sacrificed to idols, we know that there is no such thing as idols in the world, and that there is no God but one God, but one. But even if there are so called gods within in heaven and earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father from whom all are all things and we exist for him and one lord christ jesus christ by whom are all things and we exist through him so paul here uh, again he 
go back to the problems of eating eating food. Uh, so uh, he told us that there is no such an idol. This does not deny that uh, <clears throat> that uh, there are some people who have graven image, you know, uh, and we uh, we will not. Uh, we should deny that that there are some people are worshiping this idol through the grieving image in our time. And so uh, here, uh, so Paul discuss or try to explain to them there is only one God. Uh, here probably Paul is talking to the uh, weaker brothers and there is but one but one and that is in verse 18 4 to 5 and so uh, number two the one god is the creator but for us there is but one god the father from whom all uh, whom all things are all things then number three there is one Lord, Jesus Christ. One Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom all things and we exist through them. So the Greek, actually, yeah, they have a lot of gods. They have the gods for the sea. They have the God for the sky. They have God for, for sun and moon. And they have a God, a God for everything that they have. Uh, so they never imagined, let me make put that here. Uh, so they never, uh, never imagined that there is one single God who created all this until Paul actually preached. Uh, uh, they heard Paul preaching regarding the gospel. Uh, he reminded them to to them, the unknown God no, in the book of Acts. So, so here Paul argued that the idol does not exist as God because God is one. We, we can read that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39, verse 30, 35, 39, and chapter 6, verse 4. So if meat is offered to Zeus, and there is no actually real Zeus, the God, the God. There is no other God but one. He is only one of the so-called gods of the Gentiles. So there are many images that are supposed to be representations of divinity. But those divinities are nothing. That is uh, Paul's argument to them. Not, uh, they're teaching to them. So those idols are nothing but because we have only, to us, there is only one God. So Paul argue here that there is one true God, the Father who is, who is creator and we need to serve. So the Greek had a God for, yeah, I see that already. So, so Paul state that there is one Lord. So number three, you know. so number two, I, I uh, so there is uh, one God is the creator for there for for us there is but one God. So this is Paul argument to them you know, that uh, there is only one God. But on the mind of the Gentiles, there are so many gods until they heard Paul preaching uh, about. Uh, 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 the unknown God. No? And there is only one God for us. Uh, so this is the uh, whole argument. No? So number three argument that there is one Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. No? So Paul stated that there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, who is creator and redeemer in chapter 8, verse 6b, uh, the no? second part of uh, of the uh, text. Uh, this would have been, uh, uh, this could have caught the, the eyes of 
the Gentile or the Greek. To the Greek mind, the title Lord was one of the deity. So if uh, it refers to God. So there is one Lord, Jesus Christ. So he instructed Christian, there is only one God from whom all things and one Lord by whom are all all things. Paul is stating here the fact. So the point of difference is this. The Father is the source from whom and goal for whom all things exist. Whereas the Son is the agent by whom and through whom all things exist. Paul does not mean that there are two separate God, uh, two gods, so God and Lord. These are two names that are referring to one God, no? who exists as Father and as Son. So we will not discuss here the Trinity, but Paul just stating the poem no? that uh, that uh, simply stated that. Son is equal to the Father within the, uh, the Trinity or Godhead. So uh, uh, he is teaching the weaker brother that there is only one God who is creator. And there is one Lord, Christ, Jesus Christ, by whom all things and we exist through him. No? Kaya tawag natin dyan, agent. No? Uh, so, uh, letter C, not all men have the knowledge, uh, this knowledge, no, uh, we don't have that, no, no. Uh, so, uh, verse 7 to 8. However, not all men have this knowledge, but some being accustomed to idols until now. It's, it's eat food as it is were sacrificed to an idol. And their conscience being weak is defiled, but food will not commend us to God. We are needed the, the worse if we do not eat nor better if we do it. Now, he go back to the stronger brother. He said, well, not all men have this uh, knowledge. And so, uh, and so uh, here, not all have the same knowledge, actually, verse 7. So there is not in everyone that knowledge. So, so in the members of the, of the Corinthian church, Paul said there are members of the church that uh, don't have that knowledge. You know, what that knowledge they're talking about, that there is only one God and those idols are nothing. Uh, so uh, the Greek Christians who are drovel, uh, usually the Greek Christians, who have they know that these are uh, trying to divorce themselves from the uh, idol worshiping in the temple. Uh, so they have. Mm, mm, so for those people to go and eat while thinking that it was wrong, will be to them commit sin. No? Mga kapatid na uh, hindi pa rin uh, 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 matibay sa panampalataya, ang kanilang pag-isip ay uh, when you eat something that is offered to idols are uh, nothing, but to them, it was wrong. And so to them, it, it is a sin. No? 
So, siguro isipin natin ano, na sa panahon natin wala. No? Hindi nangyayari ito. But that is not true. No? The Roman Catholics, uh, we know that. No? That there are some food offered to the graven image. Mga pista-pista, no? di ba? So, may mga kapatid tayo actually na pupunta sa mga kapistahan. Uh, so, pag makita sa isang kapatid doon na hindi pa matibay, aba, natitisod sila, no? So, ano nangyari? Because they are weak, their conscience is defiled. No? So, not all have the same knowledge. <coughs> so, the conscience their cousin is considered weak because it is wrongly informed. Their cousin is uh, operating on the idea that uh, there is really is something to an idol. So they thought that they are doing something wrong, even though they were not. So this false guilt created a problem for them in their relationship with God. <clears throat> So the Korean Christian feel free to eat at the pagan temple. They base their freedom, their, they have, they base this on their freedom on correct knowledge. What is correct knowledge? That the idols are nothing. So knowing that idols are nothing, but for some, they have the consciousness of the idol. And the eat meat sacrifice to the idol as things offered to an idol. So to them, yeah, they, they bother their conscience and they committed sin. No? <clears throat> so we, what we eat or do not eat does not make us more. Meaning, Paul saying is that uh, food does not commend us to God or, with the, or making us more better than the other. Or you are not uh, more spiritual if you, know, uh, if you know idols are nothing and feel uh, free, uh, personal freedom to eat. Uh, meat sacrifices to idols. So, neither if we eat, are we the better. On the other hand, the uh, nor if we do not eat, are we the worse. No, sinasabi ni Apostle Pablo dito na pag kumakain ka, hindi na uh, you are more spiritually no but actually you are not, uh, it is not no but when kung kumain ka naman hindi ka kakain hindi man nangulugan that you are worse no? or you are uh, your spiritual standing to god is worse so no one is less spiritual for abstaining from meat sacrifice to idols uh, so this is the principle that we need to remember. In uh, practicing our liberty, it, it does not mean that you are superior than the other Christians. And the weaker Christians should not think that they are lesser in their spirituality if they are not uh, eating food offered to idols since it's nothing from God from the perspective of Christian doctrines. So, uh, let the uh, liberty. Uh, so, uh, liberty is stumbling block to the weak. So, pinapakita ni Apostol Pablo, there is nothing wrong with eating idols in, in, the, uh, in the temples. However, 
this liberty might stumbling, uh, the practice of this liberty might be a stumbling block to a weak brother. So verses 9 to 13. But take care lest this liberty of yours somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone says you who have knowledge, a dining and idle temple will not his conscience, if he is weak, be strengthened to eat things sacrificed to idols. For though you acknowledge he who is weak is ruined. So the brother for the brother for whose sake Christ died. So parang mahirap pa no basahin no. Uh, mas maganda pag uh, sana nilagyan ko sa ibang translation ito no. Uh, sa ibang translation kasi dito ang pagkabasa din eh. But food does not commend us to God. No? For neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat, we are worse. That is in verse 7. But here in verse 9, but beware lest somehow this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak. Verse 10, for if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in a temple, an idol temple, will not, this is a question, will not the conscience of him who is weak be bothered to eat those things offered to idols? And because your knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when you're seen against the brethren and wound their, wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat lest I make my brother uh, stumble. That is in verse uh, 13. No? Okay, so. The summary of this section is this. Paul warns the Christians, Christian Christians, not to let their liberty in their knowledge about idols become something which causes their weaker brother to stumble. That is in verse 9. The reason Paul warns the Christians, the Corinthians, not to use the liberty against their brother is because the exercise of their freedom may be an encouragement for their brother to act against their own conscience, their weak conscience, and thus be destroyed. To sin against a brother by wounding his conscience is sins against Christ since Christ died for him. That is in verse uh, 11 and 12. Therefore, if eating food will cause one's brother to stumble, one should, not, one should limit his freedom by not eating so that he does not cause his brother to fall or to stumble. Uh, so, um, uh, Kung himay-mayin natin yan, the situation of the stumbling. Verse 10. No? Actually, Paul is asking here. No? Eh, pag makita ka ng kapatid mo no? na mahina, na ikaw kumakain ng, ano, no? ng uh, food sacrificed to idols. So this verse, in verse 10, is one of the clear, uh, the clear evidence, uh, evidences that participating in feast and idol temple was the issue that Paul addressing. So hindi lang ito yung uh, bumili ka ng pagkain yung isang kapatid ko ba bumili ng pagkain. No? Kundi dito nakikita yung kapatid 
na nakipagpiesta. Na no? Kumain doon sa pista at uh, itong kinakain niya ay hinain kay Virgin Mary na panalangin. Piesta ng isang uh, uh, imahin. No? At nakita siya ng kapatid. No? So uh, ano ba sa tanong niya Prof. Pablo? For if someone you are there is referring to a person who is strong. Makita ka ng kapatid mo. No? So that is the cause of the situation here. No? So the result actually is the ruling of the weak in verse 11. For though your knowledge who is weak is ruined, the brother for whose Christ died. Uh, so yung uh, sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo dito ay uh, ang resulta, nakita kanya, ano mangyari sa kanya? He was stumbled. But he gave an emphasis here. The knowledgeable, knowledgeable Christian had by his knowledge of what he considered legitimate and by acting on the basis of knowledge, ano yung knowledge na yun? That eating food sacrificed to idols is nothing. However, it will ruin his brother relationship with the Istanbul, the Istanbul yung kapatid. May nakita siya. So the principle here that there is no such as insignificant believer. Kasi binigyan ni Apostol Pablo ng uh, emphasis dito. No? Hindi, ko, hindi ko lang kung sinulat ko dito. Ito. Apostle Paul stressed the value of the wicked brother by referring to the fact that Christ died for him. Therefore, the stronger brother does not view him and his uh, consensus as insignificant or unimportant. So, so wag mo nang sabihin, oh, bahala siya, mahina naman kasi siya, dapat turmaturuan niya. No? Hindi, no? So, the principle here that there is no insignificant believer. And there, is, there are no unimportant people in God's family. If you are his, then you have a great word. You are highly valued probably because of your knowledge. And because of that knowledge, you should not uh, treat this as insignificant to a brother that is weaker. So, lagi natin tingnan yun, no? mga kapatid natin. No? Alam natin sa Mark chapter 9, verse 42, And whoever causes one of this little one who believed to stumble, it will be better for him if with a heavy malson hung around his neck and he has to cast into the sea. So, ito yung... Uh, uh, sinasabi na, ni, ng Panginoon. So it is not merely a sin against another believer, but it is a sin against Christ. Because you uh, you uh, become a stumble, stumble block to, to him by exercising your liberty. So number three, sins against Christ. By sinning against the brethren and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. So we are not free to damage another person's relationship with God. By doing so, we sin against Christ. As well as the person when we put an occasion for stumbling before him or her. So, mag-iingat tayo, no? Dahil ito, kagaya sa nangyari dito sa mga kapatid natin sa Corinto, um, 
instead of building up a brother, he threw in the brother. So we need to limit our liberty, freedom. No, thinking that we are strong, but we need also to think about our brothers who are weak. So a resolution, therefore, as I Apostle Pablo, if food causes my brother to stumble, I will never eat meat again. That I may not cause my brother to stumble. So, so we are not only talking about eating at well, you know, stumbling, but anything that causes a brother to stumble, we should not do it for the sake of that brother. So your liberty, you have the liberty to do it, but you limit your liberty because of that brother. So the principle is that I should limit my liberty so that it does not create a stumbling block for a weaker brother. So that we finish that section. But we're mabilis tayo, no? Kasi dapat matapos natin to yung ano, no, kurinto, no? <clears throat> So the right of the spiritual leaders, no? ito gusto, gusto natin pag-aralan ito. Anong karapatan ng isang uh, uh, kapatid, no? Before that, so the tension between so chapter 8, limiting my liberty or enjoying my freedom within the church. So Paul advised limit your liberty. Uh, so going to uh, the right of the spiritual leaders, and that is chapter 9 verses 1 to 14. Uh, so mahaba ang chapter, ano, no? chapter uh, 9. So, in chapter 8, madali lang actually, no? Uh, now, the key here is in the uh, uh, dito si Apostol Pablo, no? Uh, Apostle Paul is discussing about his right being an apostle. So uh, Paul actually making his personal uh, right or liberty uh, in uh, uh, as an example for the brothers who are strong consider himself a strong brother who exercises his, uh, his uh, right. So the principle there that Paul is trying to tell them, a strong, stronger brother should limit the liberty for a weaker brother. And chapter 9, verses 1 to 4, 4 illustrated this by giving up his liberty or his right for compensation. Although he has the right to have compensation, he limited that right. He did not ask them. So Paul demonstrate that he does, he has the right indeed, but he limit that liberty. So ito yung right of the, the spiritual leader. So the status of the, uh, the spiritual leader, uh, meaning Paul. Paul asked uh, several questions here. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Christ Jesus our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, at, e at least I am to you. At least, naputo yung el, at least I am to you. <coughs> For you are 
the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. So Paul, <clears throat> Paul is asking four questions here in verse 9, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Am I not free? So the evidence of uh, usually actually the Corinthian uh, who is quick to proclaim of their freedom in Christ, but they would not admit easily that the other were equally free. So Paul, the spiritual leader, does not mean that he does not have that spiritual freedom too, that the other Christian enjoy. So, pinapakita ni Apostol Pablo dito. You are a stronger brother. You have enjoyed your freedom. But me, as a spiritual leader, also have that liberty to be to enjoy. Uh, second, Paul actually is uh, defending his apostleship. Because he served them free, no? He didn't ask for compensation. And so if it, I am not free, Paul was not under authority to anyone but Jesus Christ. That is his emphasis. He is not under authority of any other Christian, being an apostle, but he is under Jesus Christ authority. This is apostolic authority. Second, I am not an apostle. So it is of use that's uh, hardly stated, no need the stating. It is of use that Paul is an apostle. But uh, it was doubted and denied by some of the Christian in Corinth. Am I not an apostle? So uh, uh, the remember the context. Paul addresses uh, discussing about Christian uh, liberty, about the right based on their knowledge to eat sacrifice to idols in the temple. So Paul asked them to let go their right to eat meat, that is sacrifice to idol. But Paul used this an occasion to defend himself to his apostol apostolic uh, uh, authority. So this Christian believed that they have the full knowledge, but yet they deny about, you know, about they have full knowledge about the idols eating food in the on the temple, but yet they could hardly acknowledge that Paul is an apostle. That's why Paul asked, "I am not an apostle." So now in verse 23, Paul is actually giving them the evidence that uh, he is an apostle in the number three, the, the, for the next question. Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Paul was an apostle and it, it did not matter who did not agree because his apostleship was not from man or from men. It was not, you know, it was not that he, he, he earned his degree from a Bible school or a seminary. It was from God. Uh, Jesus Christ personally called Paul on the Damascus Road. We need that, no? In Acts, that Paul encountered Christ and he was uh, converted to. 
so Paul is trying to say that his credential as an apostle came not from man or any accredited Bible school. It is from God. So he perso personally uh, saw Jesus or Jesus personally called Paul on the Damascus road. So, uh, so he insists that he saw Jesus Christ. So that is the evidence. We know in Acts chapter 2, one of the qualifications of the apostle is that they need to be with Jesus Christ in and out of Jerusalem. Paul also saw the Lord Jesus Christ. And God sent Paul to the Corinthian. That is now his second evidence. Are you not my work in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, at least I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. So the work of God, of God among the Christian, Christian, uh, Corinthian Christians was evidence enough of Paul apostolic credential. In fact, they were sealed of Paul apostleship in the Lord. So Paul, are defending his, uh, he used this, uh, and he used this uh, uh, opportunity of their knowledge. If a strong brother has a knowledge you know, for eating food in the temple is nothing, Paul said, at least to you, he said, who are stronger in faith, I mean stronger brother, who claim to be stronger, at least you know, at least you consider me as an apostle. Because you know that I work in, you are a fruits of my work in, in the church of Corinth. So, you know, agreement to the Apostle Pablo dito. No? So, verses three to six, the right of an spiritual leaders. To na binagit na ni Apostle Pablo ang right niya. My defense to those who examine me is this. Do we have, have a right to eat and drink? Do we have the right to take along a believing wife, even as the rest of the apostle and the brothers of the Lord, Arsipas, or do they only or do only a Barnabas and I not have the right to refrain from working. And so Paul actually is talking about the defense. Paul will now assert his, his right. You see that? Uh, his right. Uh, as an apostle, as if he, he was, uh, if he is arguing as a lawyer in his case. Uh, so the word defense, no? apologia in Greek and examine, anacrino are actually legal terms uh, taken, taken from the uh, Roman law. We, we know that, no? that Paul is a Roman citizen and he is uh, familiar to these terms. So Paul feels that he is on trial and some people are asking questions about his uh, apostleship. And he make this uh, an opportunity to defend his right. So Paul actually so Paul did not begin by justifying his 
renunciations of apostolic right. What is his apostolic right? The right to have compensation. But by establishing that he had this right, he evidently, evidently had to begin there because the Corinthians were challenging those rights. They believed that Paul had worked with his hand because he lacked apostol apostolic rights, not because he had chosen to relinquish them. So nakikita na mga kwan dito, mga Kristiyanos sa Corinto, na dahil nagtatrabaho sa Apostol Pablo to support his ministry, ay sabi nila, hindi si Guga Kwan yan, hindi siya apostol talaga. No? Dahil nagtatrabaho siya eh. Hindi nila alam na si Apostol Pablo actually, uh, he forgo his right not to receive a compensation from them. So, the right of the uh, spiritual leader no, is that the right to eat and drink. Do we have a right to drink to eat? To eat and drink? The right to be accompanied by a wife. Do we not have the right to take along a believing wife, even as the rest of the apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? The right to remain, uh, the, the right to re refrain from uh, working, that is in chapter 9, verse 6. No? Hindi ko na nilagay dyan yung verse kasi eh, wala lang space. No? So, the right to eat and drink. So Paul's argument here, like an apostle, like other apostles, he has the right to eat and drink. Of course, everybody has the right to eat and drink. But actually what Paul means here, that he has the right to eat and drink at the expense of the church he served. Ibig sabihin, dito na natin mga kapatid, ang isang ministro, meron isang karapatan na kumain at uminom. No? Na binabayaran ng iglesia. <laughs> Yun ang kanyang kwalito, punto niya. So, lahat kumakain. Pero ako may karapatan bilang ministro na suportahan ng membro sa aking uh, kailangan sa buhay. No, the right to eat and drink. So, so the Corinthians argue that they have the right to eat and drink whatever they desire. So they work for their living and they earn their money and it was uh, they spend it to feed themselves. Paul actually retort that right, the same right that they had, that they have. So he is a Christian, just as they are Christian. He is laboring as just they are laboring. It's like the trabaw, so Pastor Pablo the trabaw then, no? So he has the right to enjoy the material fruit of his labor. So ito yung karapatan ng isang ministro o yung mga gumagawa may uh, naglilingkod sa Panginoon. They have the right to eat and drink that is paid by the checks or supported by the checks. Yung pangalawang uh, uh, rice na Apostol Pablo na karapatan din ng bawat ministro, the right to be accompanied by a wife. Do we not have the right to take along the believing wife, even as the, the rest of the apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? So Paul, like other, other apostles, they have the right to take along the believing wife. So again, the Corinthian Christian would not mind him taking his wife, although Paul has a wife. <coughs> As long as they did not have to support 
the apostles and his wife. So, but Paul make it clear that he have this, this right to expect support, not only for himself, but for his family. <coughs> so, isang member ng iglesia, nagtatrabaho siya para suportahan yung kanyang sarili at kanyang pamilya. Ganon din ang sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo dito. No? Na siya may karapatan din na tumanggap ng suporta kasama para suportahan yung kanyang pamilya. Dito mga kapatid, no? it is good uh, in our modern times yung mga, yung mga, mga wife nagtatrabaho. No? So kung ang ministro ay wife niya walang trabaho, mas maganda kasi kasama-kasama sana ang kanyang, uh, kanyang asawa eh, kung saan man siya pumupunta. No? Bible study siya, nandun yung asawa, yung tabi niya. No? So nangunugan na kailangan suportahan din ng kasama ng kanyang uh, pamilya, no? uh, kanyang asawa. No? Dahil ito ay naglilingko din kasama ng kanyang asawa. Kung ito ay hindi nagtatrabaho. Uh, so, karamihan sa mga ministro, yung mga asawa nila ay nagtatrabaho to help the ministers, the husband in their ministry. No? Uh, so, dapat uh, nakikita ng mga uh, iglesia yan no? na suportahan ang pamilya. Habang lumalaki ang ano, no? yung pamilya ng uh, ng ministro dapat tumalaki din na suporta, no? mga kapatid. Ano? Kasi ang nangyari ay uh, nakikita lang nila yung gumagawa. Hindi yung nakikita yung mga uh, pamilya ng, uh, ng ministro. So ang argument ng Apostol Pablo, ikaw nagkatrabaho ka para suporta yung asawa mo, uh, ikaw at ang pamilya mo. Ganun din siya. No? Nagkatrabaho sa sa Panginoon, kailangan siya suportahin at kanyang pamilya. Uh, so, dito rin ay isang ko ano, na isang doktrina din na uh, ay uh, no, na, na yung isang ministro kailangan may asawa no? or uh, pwede siya mag-asawa. Kasi may mga reliyon, mga Roman Catholics no, yung sabi ng ministro hindi dapat mag-asawa no. Dito ay binanggit na Apostol Pablo na may pwede mag-asawa ay isang ministro. So, patuloy tayo. No? So, the right to refrain from working. Verse 9 no? or verse 6. Or do, or do only Barnabas and I not have the right to refrain from working? Uh, so, alam natin siya, si Apostol Pablo sa kasi Barna, uh, si Barnabas ay nagkatrabaho sila to support their Ministry. So most of other apostles, although we we don't have any record from that, receive support from the churches they ministered. Paul and Barnabas were unique in this regard. Paul, the Paul and Barnabas chose to work and support themselves, so no one could accuse them of preaching for a money motive. And so, uh, so, the right to refrain from work. Siyempre, pwede rin kami hindi magtrabaho, no? but kailangan uh, supportan nyo kami. No? But they do this because of their preaching. That they, it doesn't mean that they are more uh, spiritual than the other preacher because you're working. I mean, if you are a minister who are supporting yourself, it does not mean that you are more uh, spiritual than those who are work in the church and uh, supported by the congregation. You see, the principle here is that the fundamental to working. That when you go to work, you expect to be paid for your labor. You expect to be compensated for the time and energy that you have extended. 
So when you work, when you go to shopping center, you don't just pick uh, things there, items, and walk out of the store without paying it. You need to understand that the owners of the store want to be paid for that item. The same thing with Paul. So here in verse seven, the principle of deserve compensation. Who at any time serve as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat the fruits of fruits of it? Or who tends the flock and does not use the milk of the flock? So Paul, the principle that Paul is telling here, the principle of working. That when you go to work, you expect to be paid for your labor. You expect to be compensated for the time and energy that you uh, have uh, extended. And so Paul gave us uh, three examples that were relevant to his day, or I think even today. No? The example of the soldier. They are soldiering and they are paid by uh, by the government for that. The examples of the farmer. When he worked in the farm, he enjoyed the fruits of his labor. And the example of the shepherd, who enjoy also the fruits of his labor. So in these three cases, the principle is the same. The workers expect to be rewarded from the fruit of his labor. So these are examples that uh, to the mind of uh, Christian, Corinthian Christians are very familiar to them. And it is true. The principle of deserve uh, compensation. And this is applied to the minister of the church, or workers of the church. Now, the right of the spiritual leaders as, as seen in the principle seen in the law. Uh, verses eight to 10. I am not speaking these things according to human judgment, am I? Or does not the law also say these things? For it is written in the law of Moses, he shall not muscle the ox while he is tracing. God is not concerned about the ox. Is he? Or is his or is he speaking altogether for our sake? Yes, for our sake it was written because the plowman ought to plow in hope and the tracers to trace in hope of sharing crops. So Paul arguing here based on the principle seen in the law. So the principle of compensation that Paul teaches to the Corinthians is not new, no? new teaching. The principle to support their minister. It is way back to the law of Moses. So Paul actually uh, quoted from uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 24, verse 4. And then he applied this to his situation. So God made a special provision in the Mosaical law for the oxen that serve people by tracing their green. In doing so, Paul said, God was teaching his concern for the maintenance of all who serve other, not just the oxen. So the principle is clear. The one who labor is to participate in the fruits of that labor. That's the principle that Paul is teaching them. According to the law, well, they need to be paid. The same thing with the uh, uh, present time that we have. 
if you are serving in the congregation, according to labor code, you need to be paid. You deserve to have, have compensation. So it is not that uh, the person teaches for free. The congregation have the obligation to support their minister. So the principle applied. As the Sabine Apostle Pablo, the principle that every workers need to be compensated. Ito na, no? Spiritual na ito. No? Sa kanya na ito. If we saw spiritual things in you, is it too much if we should reap material things from you? From, from spiritual to material. If others share the right over you, do we not more? Nevertheless, we did not use this right. But we endure all things that we may cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. And so there are three things that we need to learn here. A conditional requirement. If, you see, conditional, if we saw spiritual things in you, is it too much if we should reap material things from you? Will the serve right? If others share the same right over you, do we not more? So it is a practice that we have. It is not new. No? An enduring relinquishment. Nevertheless, we did not use this right. But we endure all things that we may cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. So, so, ating ito is a sahina, no? So, ito yung principle of, uh, of community reciprocity. Uh, support Paul's uh, argument here. So spiritual things are essentially more important than the material things. So Paul is teaching them spiritual things. So Paul is saying, well, we teach you spiritual things. Is it not also right that we reap material things from you? So that is reciprocity. We give you spiritual things, you pay us material things. Yan tawag na reciprocity. No? May ginawa ko sa'yo, pero kang dapat gawin niya sa akin. So, the spiritual things will last forever. Whereas, the material things are all temporal. So, Paul is, how much more then should those who benefited from the spiritual ministry support physically? those who ministered them. That is the argument of Apostle Paul for the minister. <coughs> for the minister. You give them material and spiritual things, the member reciprocity uh, principle is that they need to give you, compensate you with material things. Number two, I will deserve right. If I receive the right over you, do we not more? And so the precedent of practice no? of other Christian leaders support Paul's points. If you say dito, ay dati na sila sumusuporta actually sa mga ministro nila. Bakit si Paul nila bibigyan? No? As the planters of the Christian church, in Corinth, Paul has the right to support of the uh, Corinthian Christian more than any other minister did. Ibig sabihin nito, ikaw, itong planter nito ay tinatagyang kongregasyon. No? Nagsimula sa nagkongregasyon. 
iniwan niya, no? At meron nagpunta doon at uh, sinulduan nila, no? Ngayon bumalik siya, no? Uh, nagtrabaho siya doon uli. So, hindi na siya sinuportahan. Yung isa lang ay sinuportahan. That is poor argument. You did not insist, we did not insist, he Paul did not insist is right. He chose rather to support himself so his work of establishing the church might not suffer from criticism that he was serving for material benefits that he derived from his converts. So, So we never, uh, Paul, soliciting financial support for himself or his ministry. He did not offer a uh, autograph for his writing for the Corinthian or asking for donation for what he write to them. Because he worked while he is supporting his ministry. But he still has the right. He, although he work, he is working. Still, the pride is still there. But he did not insist on uh, doing it. I mean, uh, accepting their uh, or soliciting their uh, the support. Now. The enduring relinquishment. Nevertheless, we did not use that right, but we endure all things that we may cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. So, just strongly as Paul affirmed to his right to be supported by these people on matter of ministering to them, he will also affirm that he has the right not to use that right. No, so, there is some karapatan na, na, uh, na supportahin siya, but meron isang karapatan na hindi niya gamitin yung karapatan na yan. O mumingi ng pera o, o tanggapin yung supportan nila. So, uh, if, if that right will hindrance the gospel of course. <coughs> so the, the same principle of supporting a minister as seen in the priesthood in the Old Testament. The 13 to 4, 13 and 14. So don't you not know that those who perform sacred service, services eat the food of the temple? And those who attend regularly to the altar have their share with an altar. So also the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get the living from the gospel. So dito, no? yung mga pari doon sa, sa Old Testament, sa templo sa Jerusalem, they were paid for their sacrifices and offering that brought onto the temple. So ganun din yung mga pagan temple. No? They earn, uh, a, they eat a portions of that sacrifices in the temple. And so the The practice of the priesthood, uh, Father supported Paul's uh, argument here that the minister should be supported. So Paul appealed to the common Jewish practice, which was also prevalent in pagan religion, of allow, allowing those who minister in spiritual matters to gain physical support from those they serve. So the priests eat the food of the temple 
and have the share from the altar. Totoo yan. No? Yung hinahain doon sa altar, may portion doon yung uh, Levitical priest. Actually, kung konti lang yung hinahain, ang natira doon ay lahat ay sa kanila. Eh kung ang dami nung uh, ano, ang dami nung nagbibigay ng uh, o nag uh, nag sacrifice so yung mga Levi son natatiin nila yan. No? Ibig sabihin, they were supported by the sacrifices, a part of the sacrifices offered to to in offered in the uh, temple in Jerusalem. Paul appealed to the teachings of Jesus to support. Oh no. So this is the uh, the so this is the uh, uh, Paul argument here. Uh, so actually, uh, that's included in verse fourteen. You know? In verse 14, appeal, Paul appealed to the teachings of Jesus to support this point. So uh, those who proclaim the gospel should get the living from the gospel. That is the teachings of Christ. No? That is what Paul told them. But we don't have any, hindi natin mabasa na talagang sinabi ni Christ dun sa gospel. Uh, has commended that those who preach the gospel should believe from the gospel. Wala tayong mabasa nun na sinabi, oh, kayong gumagawa. But, there are some statement uh, is conclusive that he is actually teaching this. Kasi sabi na Apostol Papa sa verse 14 dito, no? So also the Lord directed those to proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. So wala tayong makikita directly na sinabi ni Cristo niya. No? But mayroong halimbawa doon sa Matthew chapter 10 verse 10 sa, sa Lucas chapter 10 verse 7 na uh, nagtuturo ng ganito. No? So, yung we we have no records no sabi ng sabi ko nga but he stated the principle in Matthew chapter 10 verse 10 for a worker is worthy of his food then in Luke chapter 10 verse 8 whatever the city you enter and they receive you eat such things and sit before you so kung pumunta ka, kung matok ka ng door knocking at may nagsabi sa'yo, halika, kumain tayo. Sabi ng Luke chapter 10 verse 8, pakainin mo. Parang uh, ang sinasabi dito, it is a part, in principle, a part of your support. Huh? Uh, Luke chapter 10 verse 8. And so, uh, Patapos na. Pabilis kong kwan. 15 to 27 ay mahaba ito, mga kapatid. Kaya uh, sa sunod natin itong pag-aralan. No? Alsays na. No? Mahaba na yung ating ano, lesson. Supposed to be kayo. May namadali ko kasi uh, gabihin kayo dyan. No? So, ito yung prinsipyo mga kapatid na uh, ating pag-aralan no? na pag-aralan. Sa susunod ay ay ito yung ating pag-aralan sa susunod, the reason for limiting is right. So, si Paul, no? liberty in bonds. No? Uh, the following that uh, yung uh, uh, Paul limits his liberty uh, the compulsation of Paul calls in verses 16 to 18, then he, the sacrifices of that uh, freedom. So Paul used this opportunity of the discussion of eating food 
in of the offered to sacrifice as an opportunity to defend himself. The principle that he has the right to be supported by the congregations in Corinth, which is a teaching to every uh, congregation that we need to support their minister. As Paul has this right. Okay, so do you have any question? Siguro next time, matapos natin ang Question, question. Mm -hmm. Kasi these are very familiar sa kanila. No? The principle oh. that you need to, uh, to, to be paid for what you uh, done no? for your work. So yung liberty naman, mga kapatid, ay, uh, you know, sabi nga lang uh, may isang kwento, no? Uh, narinig ko, sabi niya, isang pasto, sabi niya, noong panahon, uh, early stage of America, yung mga pastor, eh, nagkakabayo yan. Kasi wala pa siya, wala pang sasakyan nun. Siguro siya, Pastor Pablo, sumasakay sa kabayo, no? So nakita ng membro, sabi niya, ang ganda ng kabayo mo ah. Eh, yung preacher pa yan. <laughs> sabi niya, tanong niya, ang ganda ng kabayo mo, mataba, pero bakit pa yan ka? Sabi niya. Eh, alam mo naman, ang kabayo ay nilagaan ko. Remember, that you are the one supporting me. No? <laughs> <laughs> hindi sa pati yung support niya sa preacher kaya payat yung preacher no? so kapatid doon yung principles ano? principle of reciprocity serve them for spiritual things and the the reply you need to receive physical material from, from those who are teaching. The principle of reciprocity. Okay, so may tanong? Hello, sir. Hello, Brad. Hello po. Hello, Brad. Narinig kita. Uh, yes po. Ask ko lang po, yung sa chapter 8, uh -huh. uh, doon po sa inihain uh, uh, sa dambana mm -hmm. uh, sabi niyo po uh, mga ano yon mga uh, sobra no may mga dahil kung marami madami yung nag uh, nagdadala o naghain and then sabi niyo po uh, uh, maaring, uh, maaring yung iba ay uh, dahil sa dami ay may bibinta sa mga pamilihan. Mm -hmm. uh, practice, ano? Yes, Kasi pare, mga pare ng mga pagano, hindi mas lang nagtatrabaho. So ano, hindi naman nila kakainin lahat yun. Yes po. Ang, ang, uh, ang tanong ko po doon, Brad, uh, mm -hmm. Sa panahon po na yun, uh, papaano nalalaman nila, uh, lalo na kung ikaw ay isang mamimili sa market, na uh, yun ay inihain sa dambana o, o ini, ini, inihanda and then ibibinta sa pamilihan. Paano nalalaman ng isang mamimili? Eh, eh, do, nabanggit niyo po doon sa look na Lucas na Ani ninyo nung panahon na yun, kainin ninyo yung ihanda sa inyo. So, papaano po malalaman, no? Nalalaman nila na yun ay uh, uh, sa, pa, sa pagbili nila doon sa market ng mga karne, paano nila nalalaman na yun pala inihanda sa mga, ano, sa mga uh, jusan or uh, hain doon sa templo? Oh, sim, uh, uh, practical question yun actually. No? So, Yung nagtitinda niya, actually, hindi niya man ilalagay na, oh, ito, kung ano ito, no? Mayroon siyang uh, 
placard na sasabi ito ay kali sa templo. Ito hindi. No? Pero siyempre, mga kapatid, uh, kung nasa palingki ka, ay sinasabi ng nagtitinda yan. Ito galing sa kwan ito. Sa templo. Kaya nga, marami ang bumibili doon kasi ang mga binibinta nila talagang first class. Yes po. Kasi yung mga hinahain sa templo, yung the best uh, no, uh, animals that they have. So, talagang maganda yung karne. So, most likely through, through mouth. Ano, Manalaman nila ito ay galing sa templo. Ano. So, ito actually, hindi lang yung usa usapan doon sa chapter 8 na yung pamimili ng pagkain. Actually, nakikita ng isang kapatid ang isang kapatid na pupunta sa pistahan at kumain doon sa pista na yung mga pagkain ay nain sa kay Virgin Mary o hindi mga ako. No? So, nakita niya. So, to, to that brother, It's nothing wrong because it's to them, ito mga disdiyosa nila, nothing na, walang pag They are not actually true God. If they, if they are hinain nila ito as a sacrifice, actually it's nothing. Pero kung dito lang, uh, hindi lahat na nakaalam na ito na yan, there's nothing wrong with that. No? Yung pagkain doon, actually, yung hinahain nila actually hindi are not uh, hinahain sa Diyos na yun yung Diyos na yun ay uh, hindi naman talaga totoo <coughs> kung hindi malang nakita ng kapatid na tisod no? okay so, um, Pablo uh, ang solusyon niya I will not exercise that liberty the liberty the knowledge that I know that those gods are nothing so those sacrifices are nothing pero kung nakita ka ng kapatid mo i will not exercise liberty limit your liberty and as personal okay for the sake of the brother of a brother thing Therefore, if food causes my brother to stumble, I will never eat meat again. I will not cause my brother to stumble. So anything actually, the, the principle here, anything that will stumble your brother, you should not do it for the sake of... Okay. Okay. May mga kapatid na ano, sabi nila, oh, manood ng sini, eh. dapat kasalanan 'yan, no? Kaya nila eh, kasi corrupt their their mind. So, may eh, dapat hindi tayo magkukuwento-kuwento ng sini 'yan. Kapatid din na episod na ba? Mga Kristiyano, hindi dapat na uh, spend their time watching this uh, this For entertainment, they should, uh, they should uh, spend their time reading their Bible. Pag bago pa, basa ng basa yan. Kasi hindi ka nagbabasa. Abay sabi nga nung kapatid dito, hindi nagbabasa. No? <laughs> Kung isang kapatid na bagong membro ay... Uh, Gustong-gusto na yung Bible study. Pag Wednesday, nandun yan. Pag Sunday, nandun. Eh, makita niya mga kapatid ba? Late. <laughs> wala. Wala mo yan, makikita mo. Wala na rin siya. Kasi, it become an hindrance to them. Our attitude. No? So we should support them by by uh, We attending our Sunday school. Lalo na pagkakitin niya kapatid na bagong membro to encourage them to continue studying the Word of God. Yan ang prinsipyo. No? Principle that uh, we should not exercise our right or limit our liberty to someone. So, Sunday night, 
you have the liberty not to attend because they got in kana. So maga. But for the sake of our brothers who are not there in the morning, because of in the circumstances, we should try not in sila. Tayo ay atin ng with mad ma night worship for the sake of our brothers. Thank you, thank you, Brad. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Paul. Si Ramon, tayo ibig kayo si Ramon, ha? More, more. Wala na. Ay, naku, baka magtanong na si Ramon. Negative pa. Oo, may positive. Nakatulog si Ramon, ha? Eh, nandito lang, Brad Bird. Hindi kita pwede. Marami ako makukuha sa'yo. Pero tama yan, Brother Bert, na sinasabi magpalakasan tayo. It's not only limited. Kasi kung minsan ang magpalakasan tayo, parang tinitingnan lang natin doon sa mga activities. Pero hindi natin nakikita ang epekto sa mga gawain ng Panginoon. Eh. Sabi mo, doon nga, tayo na observe natin noon sa probinsya pa. Sa umaga, nag a tayo ng worship. Pagkatapos sa gabi, nag-aatin pa rin. Kasi mm -hmm. ang concern natin, hindi lang sa sarili natin. Yung concern sa mga mahihinang mga kapatid mo na ay lalo na mga bagong membro. Mm -hmm. to reflect, yung reflection ko minsan sa buhay natin na nakaka-attract sa kanila. Kaya mm -hmm. minsan hindi dahil umaatin ka dahil sinasabihan ka ng ministro o kung ano mag ka. Hindi, ito yung mismo, individual kwan mo ito eh individual obligation mo na hindi lang pang sarili mo kundi gusto mo makatulong sa iglesia. Regardless na ikaw wala ka naman, hindi naman sinasabi na pinapayaran ka o ano, o may support ka. Kundi, kailangan para pag-grow o pag-lago ng iglesia kung saan ka sa, kupo, sa kupan mo. Mm -hmm. Marami tayo mga alimbawa dyan, may mga kapatid na nag uh, kunwari meron silang activities nagdala ng baraha no But sometimes yung mga kapatid na titiso doon sa baraha no the playing cards no But do nothing wrong with that no kasi wala din naman kayo nagsusugal ah you just for for games no or uh, the way with this the church no may mga kapatid minsan na titiso doon no? the type of music we are listening or the movies that we are watching. So, marami, no? Now, those liberties that we have. Kung minsan, nagdala ako dyan sa ako, nagtuturo kami nun sa Batangas. Nagdala ako ng tip. Gustong-gusto naman ni Moses, ano? Yung, yung chorus, yung, si, kung yun, eh? Si, yung, yung, na nalo sa British anong tawag doon? Singing contest na doon. May hiningin sa akin yung tape ko. Ha? <laughs> sa akin na tangin. <laughs> may hiling ka pala sa music. O may hiling ako sa music pero music hindi may hiling sa akin. Hindi ko sinabi. Hindi ko sinabi. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Closing prayer tayo. Brother Romel. Brother Romel. No. Para mo ka. Brother Brad, closing. Oh, Brad. Paki-closing, Brad. Okay. Ano namin, Diyos? na mapagmahal at uh, makapangyarihan sa lahat. Kakila ko, Diyos, at lubos kami nagpapasalamat sa oras na ito, Panginoon, na patuloy kami nag-aaral ng inyong mga salita. Sa pamagitan ng platapurmang ito, Diyos, ay 
na ipagpatuloy namin ang aming mga pag-aaral upang magamit namin ang aming mga naririnig at sa pag-aralan sa paghayo ng iyong santong ibanghilyo. Salamat to Diyos sa mga pagkataong ito na si Brother Bert na ginamit ninyo Panginoon upang magturo, magpanday sa aming kaisipan sa aspito ng spiritual na mga bagay o Diyos. Katulad ng ito na nangyayari sa amin ngayon. Nawa o Diyos ay patuloy namin magagamit ito at uh, matulungan kami Panginoon na lalamang lumago sa aming mga pananapalataya sa iyo o Diyos. Tulungan mo kami Panginoon na may mabuti at uh, mapagmahal sa bawat isa at uh, may, uh, may nais at pag-ibig na madala ang Santong Ibanghilyo para sa lahat ng tao. Salamat o Diyos, patawad sa aming mga pagkakasala. Ito ang aming sabot langit sa pangalan ng Panginoon Isus. Amen. 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 Amen.